finally, it's, it's on DMT that the main character also um, sees the way things are. I mean, he has this long sort of paranoid, you know, uh, delusion or fantasy about the lizard people coming to get him and all that. But he kind of sees the way things are. He sees the yin-yang of the culture and the counterculture and the, the, the sort of the silliness of identifying with a counterculture because then you're sort of on one side of this duality. And, and he, kind of, he kind of voices the irony that I've always seen with so many people's experience of psychedelics, which is that they see themselves as then on a side, you know, the psychedelic side of things, whereas the, the message, if there is one from psychedelics, has always seemed to me that these sides are arbitrary, you know, that we all go or none of us go, that, that we bring Bush along with us, you know, he can't just be left in the White House while we all make it through the bottleneck at the end of history, you know, with the awakened few who've had the DMT experience, you know, it's like, no, this is, if it's one planetary consciousness, then they're all a part of it. So, you know, you can hear it in the voices of so many of our, you know, DMT prophets, this slight, well, I understand the thing. We're all in on the joke, aren't we? You know, which is like, all right, you're in on the joke. Cool. I'm out. All right, I'm out of the joke then. Because once you're in on the joke, you created the show. You've created that duality. You've broken things up. You're polarized. And, um, and that's sort of that revolutionary fervor that doesn't do anything but get you going in circles.